Africa is a continent diverse and rich in starches, in meats, and with me right now is one of the two Zimbabwean starches that's so common in our agricultural season. This is Wufu, the maize mill. We grow our maize throughout the rainy season. We dry it, we grind it into a mill. Then we have our Mbambaira. You're watching the menu and I'm Dalsi for Zain Dekwa. I'm gonna show you how to make our sadza. Some call it pap or thick porridge. We call it sadza here in Zimbabwe. So what I'll need is a pot of water. So depending on the amount of people you're serving, you can have a bigger pot. This can serve about two or three people, depending. If they are men and they are active, they might need a bigger pot. And then for my sweet potatoes, I'm gonna do a sweet potato mash. I'm just gonna slightly mash them. I'm not going to add in any milk. I'll grate them, boil them, and just smash them a bit. And then we'll serve that with some chicken, some cabbage, something to go to just tie this all in. So now my water has warmed up. Okay. So the way I'm gonna be making my sadza right now, where we use musika. And then we sort of do that motion. And as I put my millimil in here, that motion just mixes it. It has to be rapid so that it does not have mapundu. Right. So let me grab a spoon. Uh -huh. Now my wufu. My msika goes in. It's a cooking stick. Some more. Now, how much goes in actually is something that we Zimbabweans are taught as we grow up as girls. You, you judge with your eyes. You see the thickness of your porridge and it tells you if it's done. I think I need a little more. There's always a huge debate on how to cook sadza. Whether kusikira kana kupambira. It's both. It's both really. Both. What now you need to do is check your time for the boiling. Kukwata pepe. If you've put in your flour or your maize meal into here, you didn't add in some cold water. It takes a shorter time. Kukwata. I'm just keeping an eye on my porridge because I'm looking at how it thickens. So as it stays on the stove, it thickens more. So I just keep an eye until it starts to boil, it starts to bubble, then I can close my lid. I'm also adjusting my mealy Right. Traditionally, as I said, you do it like this. Right. Now, I think it's about to come to a boil. I remove this, put on my lid, let it boil five minutes and then add in some more of that maize meal. So as I wait for my sadza, the chikwata, I'm just going to deal with my second starch, mbambaira, a sweet potato. I'm just going to take off the skins. I'm going to do a smashed mbambaira. This is almost like a mesh, but I'm not going to be adding any milk or margarine. Right, that's beautiful. Just using a peeler, just remove the skins. Or you could just boil them with the skins and then when they're done, remove the skins. It'll be easier to peel. But this works better for me. Now, the reason why I like peeling is you can add in spices if you like. I can add in some garlic in here as I boil this because I'm going to have this with some chicken. A lot of people often make mbambai that they boil and then have it with tea or as a snack, but they don't realize how versatile this, fruit, this vegetable is. 
everything you can do with a, with a normal potato, you can also do with a sweet potato, which means fritters, you can do chips, you can do uh, a roast, you can also do a stew with mbambaira. Everything you do with a raw potato, you can do with their cousins, a sweet potato. Yep. Okay, this has been a tedious one. I need to remove this now, my last one. Okay, so now this is done. Let me just remove the peels, grab a pot, and then we'll boil this. I've been peeling my sweet potatoes. Now I'm gonna use a grater, the large part. What I'm trying to do is have them uh, boil quickly. I don't have too much time. I don't like staying in the kitchen that long. So I look for the easiest ways and fastest ways. Let me just put this. Okay, I seem to be having a challenge with this side, so why not just use the normal side? It's faster. Right. So the sweet potatoes have got so many varieties, the red, the orange, they also have the white. This is almost like a cross between the yellow and the white. I'm grating my sweet potatoes. In here, my sadza is boiling. Kupata in shona. So I just finish off the last small piece. Okay. So here, the water has boiled. What I need to do, just remove this and put it straight into the boiling water. Dunk it all in. Okay. Some salt. Remember, this is sweet potato. We've just grated it. Okay. Some garlic to give it another dimension of flavor. Again, close this up. Five minutes, and then I'll be back to show you how to serve the statues. So in here, I've got my sweet potatoes. I've just grated them and I put them in here, some boiling water. And now in here, my sadza, I'm just going to swap them so that I use this stove to finish off my sadza. Right, some mealy meal. This is why we need a big wooden spoon. So we continue to add some mealy meal up to a thickness that you like. Some people like it very thick and some people like it a little bit thin. It's now time It's just mixing your sadza thoroughly. I've reduced my heat. It's now on about three. Right, so I'll do this. It should be served hot. You can see how steaming hot this is. That's how we serve our sadza. There's nothing as irritating as sadza coming to the table. You try to dip your hands into it, it's cold. So have your sadza while it's still very hot. That's how you really enjoy it. What? That's beautiful. I think that's smooth. Oh yeah. You see it rising and popping. It's a sign that your sadza is done. If you don't have that, I tell you, yeah. It goes up like a balloon. That's how you know you have a perfect sadza. Right, beautiful. What I'm gonna do now, close this up. I'm excited, I'm super, super excited. I've got two of my favorite things going on on the stove. Sweet potatoes, sadza. This is a family tradition every night, or at least once a day. Right, 
I'm going to remove some of the water in my sweet potatoes. Okay, there you go. That's perfect. Put it back onto the stove. I'm just going to smash those. If you've got a masher, you can mash them. I'm just smashing them. I added in some garlic. I added in some salt. And now I've got eyes waiting. They're so excited. They want to see. They want to have this. Okay, there it goes. That's beautiful. It's mashed. It's smashed, not mashed. Huh? You can see. Alright. So if you like about a tablespoon of butter, margarine, just put it in there. Let it simmer five minutes. Salt and pepper. And then we can serve this. I'm gonna be making some chicken, cabbage, and then I'll show you how to plate it all up. You're still watching the menu, and I'm Dalsifa Zainadekwa. I love being in the kitchen, and I'm hoping to inspire somebody out there to have the same passion for being in the kitchen. Whether you're in high school, or primary, or an adult, this is simple. Five minute meals, easy. Fresh from the cupboards, fresh from the fridge, the garden, mix it all up. I've got some cabbage. Here I've got an onion, some spices, ginger and garlic. I've got my beautiful chicken breasts here that I'm going to cut into cubes. So, just in half and cube them. Here, my pan is heating up, ready for some oil. You can cut them as small or as big as you like. But I like bite size sizes. Something that I can just put in my mouth and chew. I don't want to struggle with my meat. Okay, so there goes. Right, but two more to go. We are meat people. Saka, when it's meat, we go big. We don't hold back. The good thing about chicken is you can grow it in your own backyard. Either free range or you can do the broiler. Okay, beautiful. Now, as I finish off some oil in my pan, that's about two or three tablespoons again. Basically, that's all you need, two or three tablespoons for each meal. We don't want too much oil in your diet. Right, that finishes. And I think this is heated up again. So it's time to just throw them all in there. Aha, the sizzle. That's a sign that something good is going on in your pan. That's a sign that this meal is going to be good. That hot sizzle, your oil is hot enough so your food won't take long on the stove. Right. We can just let that brown as I cut my onion. With me here, I have a chef's knife. This is a beautiful blade, very easy to cut with. I got it from a friend, Mama Ruth. Thank you so much. I love this. Easy, just like that. Remove the peel. Every kitchen needs the right utensils, a big pan, the right sort of knives. Makes life very easy, fast. You don't need to take too long in your kitchen. Yep. So, I love doing this. And because it hurts in the eyes, you can just put it away from you. I know people have theories of how to stop your eyes from crying, but well, if you're a chef, you have to get used to it. In the end, it will not cut you. Cut. Again, with the next one. Now, onions are really one of those things that you can put as much or as little as you like. So I've used about three quarters of my onion. I've got some chicken cubes, that's beautiful. So I'm not going to let them brown so much, adding in some onion, 
ginger, garlic. Now this is a marriage made in heaven. Ginger and garlic. In goes. Nice. I've got an array of chicken spices. Portuguese, chicken spice. Whatever chicken flavors you have going on in the house. Look at that. It's not always that you need to brown your meat. You know, this is a vegetable dish that I'm going to be putting in some cabbage. Joint with the meat. It's beautiful like that. You don't need any soups. You don't need any tomatoes. For those people who have allergic creations to tomatoes. And you know, sometimes you need to do away with tradition. It's not every day that you want tomato, tomato, tomato. You've got a stew, you've got dry meat, and then you've got a vegetable and chicken mixed and no tomato. There's some spice, garlic, ginger. That looks beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. If I was going to be doing something uh, European, I'll do a shawarma maybe. But no, I'm going traditional cabbage. I'll just remove this, take my lid, just close it, and then just let it wilt until the cabbage is done. And then I'll show you how we'll pair this with our sadza, with our smashed sweet potatoes. In this pot, I've got some cabbage, some chicken breasts that I just cut into cubes. I did not put any tomato. And I don't think anybody is going to miss the tomato in there. So what I need to do now is adjust my seasoning. I can put some salt and pepper. Just a little bit more. Okay. Because this is a huge pot. It's a big pot and I had it added in any salt. And this looks perfect. Now, depending on how you like your cabbage, if you like it with a crunch, leave it with a crunch. But I like mine when it's a bit tender. So I let it go down a little bit more. And then I'll be serving this in just a moment. So on the last segment, I did sadza. I also did sweet potatoes. I did chicken with cabbage. I'm continuing with my traditional menu. Now, I've got maguru. This is the towel maguru matumbu these are awful they really need to boil so we did that beforehand to save time and i'll show you now how to do it i'm not going to be doing it the traditional way where people just put in uh, kale or any other vegetable i'll show you how to do a bit of a stir fry but still remaining traditional okay what to do now my pan on the heat I need that to just grab some heat, put it on about four, right? And then I'm going to slice again my maguru. I want them a bit smaller, just like that. I put it in with my matumbo. Now these don't need to fry. I'm cutting them into strips while I wait for my pan to catch some heat. Remember, matumbo are smaller these are intestines you need to clean them up perfectly put them on a tap put some water inside and clean them some even go as far as turning them to remove the fats that are inside maguru this is the stomach and this guru this towel like items help when the cow is digesting so that's gonna be a big, big fist. Okay, in there. I think it looks beautiful. We are Nyama people. We love our meat, whichever way. Okay, this looks perfect. Now, oil. Because my pan is already heated, my oil won't take too long to heat. What I need to do in is add in A trick 
when you're doing offals, maguru, matumbo. You can soak them again in some lemon or in some vinegar just overnight to just remove the stench from there. Right. This is why so many of our modern girls and boys don't like eating maguru ni matumbo because when they smell them, when they're being cooked, you know, they, they attract a lot of uh, noonsies and stuff. But you can also do that. Just dip them in. This is some curry that I just put in water to make a curry water solution. In goes my curry water solution. All right. I'll just let that heat up and cook for about 15 minutes and I'll show you how to finish it off. We are still on the menu. We are having a blast because we are so traditional. We're going back to our roots, the things that we are familiar with, things that we know, accessible to every Zimbabwean home. Maguru, matumbo, pepper, red, yellow. I'm just gonna do sort of a stir fry. Yes. You know, one thing about home cooking is always try to variate the way you cook. That way people enjoy having it. So if maguru matumba chungo ya nema veg every day, it becomes monotonous, it becomes boring. Just hit them with something new today. Right. I need them to be into strips. Maguru matumbo mixture. This is one of the most perfect dishes, even on our ceremonies. Pakusungirwa, when we are welcoming a new baby, we have this. I'm just trying to get something different in. I added in some water with some curry powder. Now some onion. Now, the sad part about it all is you can't fry these. So, it's also good in that you don't have to stay too much while making them. The onions, let them move down a minute or so. In goes your ginger and garlic. I'm going to be using some gram masala. It's Indian, but we've got a lot of Indians in Zimbabwe. So why not infuse that in our Zimbabwean dishes? Make them welcome, make them a part of us. Some gram masala. The fragrance. It's a combination of spices. Some cumin, some cinnamon, some coriander. A lot of it. It just gives you another dimension. Right. Some peppers. Red, yellow. Huh? Instead of putting my veg, instead of putting kale, go different. Dare to be different. Serve them something that they'll never expect. Some peppers. Now, I call this a fusion of English and Shona or Zimbabwean rather because Zimbabwe is a country rich in culture rich in languages So one thing we agree on is having Magurune Matumbo in every one of our cultures So this is another way to present it to them Right, I'm just waiting for my peppers to wilt eh? and then marry together with the rest of the meat and then I'll remove this from the stove and serve it with the sadza, cabbage and chicken for those that don't like maguru and then I also have some mashed or smashed um, sweet potatoes you're going to enjoy this stay tuned I've got some sadza, sweet potatoes some uh, guru namatumbu I also have some cabbage and chicken for those that don't like the insides like some would do Mugwaku, our traditional serving stick. This is how we use. 
This is what we use for our sadza. A nice generous potion with the back of the spoon. Let's mix it in. You can put a little more. That's how we like it. That's very traditional. Right. In here, I have smashed potatoes. I'm just going to put this into a plate. Just line the bottom. Right. This is beautiful. Magurune matumbo. They're going on top of that. Yes. With the peppers. Look at that. It looks beautiful. Some maguru. Be generous. Some peppers. That looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. And now, I'll go to my favorite, the chicken. But I just need to grab a spoon to show you how to plate my chicken. I've served my sadza, some smashed sweet potato, but I've added magurune matungu. And now, lastly, I'm going to add my chicken. Chicken, the cabbage. I love this. Now this is me. This is me on a plate. This is also my daughter. She loves this. So we can have lots. Yeah, why not have more? Let's fill up the whole plate. Because we've got sadza. Right. That looks beautiful. And now for some garnish. A bit of greens. All around. Right. And now we're ready to eat our sadza, maburuna matumbo, chicken and cabbage. So this has been our menu today. I hope you truly enjoyed it. Try it at home and tell us your experiences. Enjoy your day. This is the menu with me, Dasifa Zaim Dekwa. Enjoy. <laughs>